quite infected plants, aphid infected plants um, unpotted. We've got the big Drosera Hamiltonii with its massive black uh, thick roots. Um, we've got right the way down to um, uh, Drosera prolifera with its very, very tiny fine roots. Hopefully that will zoom in. You can see how small that guy there is. Um, the Pinguicli I've separated out. I see aphids on there. And um, my really, 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 I mean, look at these. This will give you an idea of uh, the age of my Drosera capensis. I might have to hold it up, otherwise you're not going to be able to get it all in, in shot. The size of the root mass on this, these guys are old. If we zoom in, I'll be able to show you the stem as well. Let's point you back down so you've got a bit of a darker background. I've had these for a long time. This just gives you the, an idea of how big a stem these guys can actually grow. Next to my thumb, it's, it's literally, it's like a piece of bark. And that, that stem's probably four inches long. I've had them a long time, so they almost become like a little mini tree. So I don't want to lose them, but uh, I'm prepared to sacrifice one just to find out whether or not this is going to work and what sort of impact it's going to have on my plants. Okay, so I've actually got you up on the work surface up there, just so you can see. I'm going to be using just normal tap water uh, for this at this stage, just because, uh, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it's not particularly hard water here, and actually they, they're up against it as it is anyway. It's not really going to make any difference. So I'm just going to use normal uh, water just to give these guys a proper rinsing off. I'm going to grab a pair of scissors as well and tidy these guys up as and where they need it. We're going to give the roots a good clean. We're just going to give the whole plants a, a good scrub-a-dub-dub. -dub. Uh, we're going to make sure we're paying special attention to the rosette. I'm going to add a little bit of warm to that as well. I don't want to, to freeze my plants, or my fingers for that matter. So we're going to make sure we're getting right in amongst all the leaves. And giving them a little bit of an agitate with our fingers. So we're going to be using our fingers to knock anything which is in position out of the way. And really make sure you pry everything open because if the aphids are there they won't hold on uh, during the, uh, the under the weight of water which is hitting them it will just knock them off and then end up being displaced so the lever end up elsewhere on the plant uh, or hopefully be knocked off and disappear down the drain so i'm going to go ahead and uh, do all of these it also gives them a chance to, also any, any leaves which are unfolding, or the, you know, any juvenile leaves which are in the process of unfurling, I'm just going to furl them back uh, very gently, just with my finger. Just that if there, are, there is any there, then they will be knocked off as well. I've already cleaned this black tray out over here after the plants were in it, uh, so that's, I consider that to be clean. There's another little... Um, Drosera Hamiltonii here. This is one that just grew up from the roots uh, of the mother plant just there. And it's only a very twee little thing, but uh, it will grow to be a got beautiful flowers, these plants. So this will grow up to be a nice sized plant eventually. We just want to make sure we give it the best chance we possibly can. Once again, agitating with our fingers all around the little juvenile leaves. Have a close look at them. Sure, those wiry roots are cleaned as well. Okay, I'm just going to get on with this now, and uh, you're going to have to just leave me to it, I'm afraid. really left to do now is to pop these guys up like I said that's pretty much all we can do for them at the moment we've given them a good wash and uh, I don't want to get whilst I'm potting them up I don't want to get loads of neem and uh, perithrin all over me so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pot them up first 
Uh, and then once they're potted up, that's when we're going to give the three Drosera capensis a spray, respectively, which, with whichever biological organic pesticide uh, we're going to be using for each one. So um, the rest of them are just going to get some neem oil, uh, maybe a, apart from the pingriclias, because they're just they rely so heavily on the surface of their leaf to carnivoreize or capture prey that I think if I give it a thick coating of neem, I think they'll actually suffer a lot more than most of the other sunges. Uh, the others will just get a good old fashioned neeming, but um, I'll get these guys potted up. And then before uh, I call it quits, before I call it quits for the night, what I'll do is we'll set the plants up, um, give them a good spray in turn, We'll label them as well, so I remember which ones have been treated with what, and uh, then we'll go from there. Fingers crossed, we'll uh, have to wait and see whether they survive or not. How exciting. So uh, I won't bore you with this next bit. I'll just get on and pot everything up. Okay, so it's nearly one o'clock in the morning. I'm exhausted. I've semi-cleared up inside the kitchen so my wife doesn't have to come back to an appalling mess. Um, everything's potted up and uh, all that's left to do is to apply the individual pesticides to the individual plants uh, and then after that I guess the test uh, only, time, only time will tell really to see how they respond to each of the individual um, the products so um, I guess it's just time to do that right now really um, here's a quick look at um, the plants I've potted up now I have to pick you guys that's going to be wobbly I'm, I apologize for that up front but uh, I, I'm so exhausted, I haven't really got time to set the camera up properly, so I'll peer you over anyway, so there's Drosera prolifera, centre of shot, to the left of that's Cunifolia, the two Hamiltonii, and there's the very sad and ugly mutated um, Drosera adelae, and then I've just bundled all these Pinguiclia into three pots, uh, and then that white powder you can see on top there is just some ground up eggshell just to... Uh, Add a bit of calcium to the soil mix. Over the other side, so over this side of the kitchen, we've got the other plants which are ready in the, um, well, they're in the in the sink down there. So those are the ones we're going to be applying the pesticide to. So here are the three Drosera capensis, our guinea pigs. Uh, these are the ones that we're going to be treating individually. So I'm going to take one of them I've already marked with a sticker. So I've placed a sticker here. And this is the one that we're going to use the uh, pyrethrum on because I just don't know what it's going to do to carnivorous plants. This poor thing here is going to get the double whammy. That's going to get the mixture of pyrethrum and um, neem oil. And uh, this guy I've just put down in front of you here, slightly out of shot. This is one that's just going to get good old fashioned neem. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do the neem one first right now in front for you guys. So you can see that. I'm basically just going to give it a good a good drenching like that. I use this stuff all the time anyway. I'm just going to give the bottle a shake whilst we're putting it on. And because it comes out as a, a as a cone, you can kind of get, if you go past the tentacles, um, it will then uh, apply it to the undersides of the leaves quite nicely. So you get quite a uniform covering with that. There we go. That's that one done. And these will go straight back into the greenhouse. Uh, I'm confident that uh, if there is anything that I've blown it off uh, when I use the water uh, in the sink. So I'm not concerned about uh, the potential spread. Um, it, it could recontract aphids, hypothetically, I suppose, from from other plants in the greenhouse. But I've, like I said before, I've pretty much got a handle on it. Um, and I'm confident that what's in there is uh, going to be nuked. I, I literally just finished spraying everything again this evening. So this is the pyrethrum. I'm just going to give this another... Sp oh my goodness. There's just so little in here in this bottle that it's uh, not spraying very nicely. It's going all over my hands. So I'm going to wash my hands again afterwards. There we go. And wash everything here thoroughly. So I'm pretty sure getting this stuff on your hands uh, is not a great idea, even if it is just a plant extract. Okay. I'm going to wash that, get a cloth, wash all this lot down, 
uh, and this guy's going to get the double attack. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hit it with the pyrethrum like that. And I'm going to hit it with the oil, the neem oil, straight on the, rather than mixing the two together. Because this will pretty much have exactly the same effect. There we go. So that one's had both uh, the pyrethrum and the neem oil. I'm going to put both of these up here. And everything's going to get a good scrubbing down. Uh, if you are going to do this, please don't do what I've done. Do wear eye protection. Do wear goggles. Um, in both instances, the applicators I'm using are being ho hopefully almost fully confined to the sink area. Uh, and obviously, it's been ejected away from my body. And it's just covered my left hand slightly. Um, so, yeah, don't do it like I've done it. Wear appropriate PPE. Um, yada, yada, yada. Don't drink any of it. Okay, so only time will really tell how each of those plants react to the uh, pesticides, um, organic pesticides that I have used uh, in this instance to control uh, the spread of aphids and basically to eradicate anything that's already there. Uh, it's been quite an in-depth video as well. I've really gone through um, sort of the dilution um, of the, of each of the pesticides that we're using, basically where you can buy them, what they are, brief description of them. We've had a look at uh, repotting uh, plants which are affected with aphids as well as washing them off as well because, like I said, just a good solid spray, uh, even with a hose. If you've got a plant in the back garden, it's probably rubbing pesticides in my eye, but uh, that'll be fine. Um, you know, you can dislodge aphids and they will not return. They're not very mobile on foot and there's lots of other pests or, or predators out there which will feed on them before they get a chance to get back to the host plant they were originally. So we've repotted those now. We've got the test jars which are over on the windowsill there. We've treated we had the two flower spikes which were covered in aphids. One we've treated with pyrethrum and one we've treated with just neem. And I will be coming back and having a good look at those tomorrow. Um, after work and doing a quick update video to see um, basically get a, get a handle on the efficacy of both and what effect it's having on the aphids so I hope you've liked this video um, I've really enjoyed making it uh, thanks again to all my patreon supporters uh, especially Valerie um, your ongoing support makes this uh, all that much more worthwhile especially as it's well it's one o'clock in the morning now I've still got to do all this tidying up before I then go to bed and then tomorrow will be editing all of this so yeah a lot of work goes into making this content for you guys i do enjoy doing it um if it was ever to become a chore um and i felt that it was something i was no longer enjoying i would just stop doing it because uh when i started this channel it was never something that i made a pact with myself that i was only ever going to do it as long as i was enjoying it so uh luckily for you guys i still am it's good fun um the dreadlocks coming off a charity has not been forgotten uh, I'm going to be doing a book review of all things uh, in the next couple of weeks and um, during that video I will be announcing the charity to which I'm going to be raising money for. Uh, I will then run uh, a series of videos uh, promoting the removal of my hair over probably approximately a month, month and a half but I'll have all the details ironed out for you at that point uh, and then we'll be starting that probably the beginning of February um, to the middle of February, something like that. So uh, do keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Oliver's Greenhouse.